Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Calculating the Area of All Triangles, Part 1. The reason we say all triangles is because in the last lesson we were focusing on the right triangle. That's a triangle with a 90 degree angle in the corner. We know that the area of that is one half times the base times the height of that triangle. Here we're going to open it up to any shape uh, triangle. We'll be able to calculate the area of all triangles and also understand why the equation for the uh, area of a, of a triangle actually works and makes sense in the first place. So let's go ahead and before we solve our first problem, I mean, our actually our first problem is going to be to find the area of a triangle like this, where we have a base and a height here, but the angles in the corner, they're not 90 degree angles. This one is because it's a, a, the height of this thing coming down, but the angles in the corners are not right uh, angles there. So that's what we're going to be doing. But let's before we do that, let's just take a trip down memory lane and let's talk about a couple of things. Let's first talk about a rectangle. This is a rectangle, right? It has a base B and a height H. What is the area of this guy? The area of a rectangle? It's just the length times the width, but in this case, it's the length is, uh, or one side is B and one side is H, so it's base times height. The area of the rectangle is base times height, right? So then, if we say, instead of that rectangle, what happens if we cut that guy in half? We just literally slice it corner to corner, and then we're going to find the, the uh, area of just one of these halves of that rectangle, which, look, forms a right triangle. This is a right triangle here. So from this diagram, you can see that if the area of the entire thing is just base times height, then the area of the right triangle, which is inside, is just one half times base times height, because you would take the whole area and you would just cut it in half, divide it by two. That is where the area of the right triangle comes from. One half times base times height comes from taking the area of the rectangle, if you made it into a rectangle, and just cutting the thing in half. That's where that comes from. But now let's take it a step further. So this type of triangle would be, I guess I'll just draw it here, a right triangle like this, with a base and a height. That is what the, where this area uh, equation is applied to. But let's change it a little bit. Let's change it, instead of a right triangle like that, let's make it a more general triangle shape, something like this, right? Notice this is not a right angle in any of the corners, but we can still say that it has some sort of base uh, to it, and it has some height, right? You can measure the height from the side here, the top, the tippy top down to the bottom. That would be the height of this thing. Or more generally, what you would usually do is you would put H down here, and you would draw a little right angle telling yourself that as you drop the line to the bottom there, it's going to make a right angle there, and the height from the base all the way up to the tippy top is what we call H. Now it turns out that the area of this triangle is exactly the same equation, one half times the base times the height. So you see it's no, it's no different. There's no different equation. Here it's just a little easier to visualize because I can show you in terms of the rectangle, the area of this guy is one half times the base times the height, which is what we got for the right triangle. But what I'm telling you now is that even if the triangle is not a right triangle, if you know the length of the base and you know how far it is from the base to the tippy top of the thing, measured from the side or inside or whatever, this width, this distance, one half times base times height is exactly the same thing. And you could prove that to yourself. I'm not going to do it here. But you see, when you cut it like this, you, you form a right triangle right here and you form a right triangle from here. So you could write down what the area of this is and what the area of this is. And when you put it all together, you're going to find out that it's exactly the same equation as what we have been using all along. Now let me show you an equation of a really weird triangle. What about a triangle like this? Something like this. Now this does not look like a typical triangle, but it is a triangle because it has three sides, right? But notice it looks quite a bit different than this, uh, than the other ones above. What would be the area of a weird looking triangle like that? Well, it still has a base here, and it still has a height. I could measure a height uh, uh, by literally dropping a line down. You could just kind of drop a line down like this. I guess, something like this, and call that H. So the height of this triangle is from the very base all the way measured to the tippy top, same definition as here, and we call that a distance H, right? And so what do you think the area of this thing is going to be? It's going to be one half times the base times the height again. And again, we could calculate this. We could draw this as a larger triangle, and then this forms a right triangle here. We could subtract this area out to tell us what this area is. I'm telling you that there are ways to go and figure out and show yourself that this is the actual 
equation of the area of this thing by looking at the area of the whole thing and subtracting out this little piece here. And we could do the same thing with all these other ones, but the bottom line is we don't really need to do any of that stuff because it all works out that the equation of a triangle is the same for all triangles. That's basically what it is. One half times base times height. It's just that when you have a triangle like this, you measure the height from the top all the way down. When you have a triangle like this, you measure the height from the top all the way down level with the base here. And of course, if it's a right triangle, we measure it the same way. So exactly the same equation in all three cases. So we're gonna solve problems like this, problems like this, and also problems like this. Notice the height here is measured from the top all the way down to the base. But we're defining the area of the shaded region in blue. So let's go ahead and apply that and calculate the area of these guys. What would be the area of this triangle? You only have to remember one equation, one half times the base times the height. You're gonna use it over and over again. So what do we have? One half, right, times the base, which is seven, times the height, which is eight, right? One half times seven times eight. Now you can do it any way you want. You can write these as fractions and multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. You can multiply them in any order you want because you're going to get the same answer. What I'm gonna do is multiply one half times, I'll multiply these, seven times eight I know is 56. Right? So what I'm gonna have is 56 over two, right? Because you could say this is over one, this is over one, so this 56 will be over one. Multiply these two and get 56, multiply the ones to get this. You're gonna multiply this to get 56, multiply this to get two. So ultimately what you have to do is take 56 and cut it in half. What is 56 divided by two? Now I'm not gonna do it for every problem, but you can say well, 56 divided by two, two times two is four, get a one, drag down a six, two times eight is 16, remainder zero. So you get an answer of 28. The area is 28, and what is the unit? Centimeters times centimeters is centimeter squared, or square centimeters. So we're gonna call it 28 square centimeters. The point of it is for you to know that the equation of the rect of, of the of the area of a triangle is the same, really, for all triangles. It's just we start with right triangles because they're easier to understand, and now we're opening it up to different shaped triangles or different, different, uh, you know, different types of triangles. Let's take a look at the following triangle. Six millimeters, 10 millimeters. Equation is the same, one half times the base times the height. So one half times the base is 10, so it would be multiplying times 10. I'm gonna write it as 10 over one, though. And then the height is six. Multiply by six, I'm gonna write that as six over one. So I'm multiplying by 10, multiplying by six. So one times 10 is 10. Two times one is two. Still have to multiply by the six over one. 10 times six is 60. And two times one is two. And 60 divided by two is 30. And so that means the area is 30 what? It's millimeters times millimeters, which is millimeters squared. So it would be 30 millimeter squared or square millimeters, however you want to say it. All right, now here is the oddball type of rectangle or triangle, um, but it's the same thing. We want to find the area of the shaded region in blue right here. So we have to identify the base, the base is 11, and identify the height, which is the distance from this base all the way up to the tippy top, measured here as being eight. So the area is again, one half times the base times the height. The base is 11, so I'm gonna write that as 11 over one. And the height is eight, so I'm multiplying by eight, I'm gonna write that as eight over one, all right? So let's multiply, one times 11 is 11, two times one is two. Still have to multiply by the eight over one. 11 times eight is 88, and two times one is two. Now you can do the long division on 88 divided by two, but I think you can convince yourself when you divide each of them by two, you'll get 44. And so the area here is 44, and the unit is inches times inches, which is square inches, or inches squared, however you want to say it. So 44 square inches. All right, so I'd like you to solve these yourself. I'm going to take these three down. We have two more, and then we will be complete with this lesson. All right, next problem. Let's take, take a look at this uh, triangle here. We have six meters and seven meters, the area of this guy. And this particular one actually happens to be a right triangle, you see it in the corner there, is one half times the base times the height. So it's going to be one half uh, times seven times six. Now I could write these as fractions and do it the other way, but I'm trying to 
show you some variety here. I don't really want to do 1 half times 7 because I know that that's going to give me a decimal answer. So instead, let's multiply this. 7 times 6 is 42. So it's 1, uh, well, I guess it's 42. And then what I'll do over here is I'll say it's 1 half times 42. 1 half times 42. So in other words, 1 half times 42 is the same thing as taking 42 and dividing it by 2, right? 42 divided by 2 is going to be 21. You can see that when you divide this by 2 and divide this by 2, it's going to exactly equal 21. So the area is 21 meters squared. 21 square meters, also known as meter squared. All right, here's our very last triangle that we have. 9 kilometer base, 12 kilometer height. The area of this guy is 1 half times the base times the height. 1 half times the base of 9 and times the uh, height there. So the base is 9 and the height is 12, right? So 1 half times, what is 9 times 12? It actually works out to be, when you multiply this out, 108. So what you have to do is basically what you have here is 108 divided by 2. 108 times a half is the same as 108 divided by 2. When you do the long division on this, what you're going to find out is that the answer comes out to be 54. When you take 108 divided, or you can just take 2 times 54, convince yourself that it, it works out to be 108. So the area is 54, and it's not uh, kilometers, it is square kilometers. So 54 square kilometers. All right, at this point, <clears throat> I'd like to encourage you to start at the beginning and solve them all yourself. It's not like they're harder, it's just some of the numbers are a little bigger, and so you have to work a little harder. Take the 108 and divide it by 2. Do the long division, or if you're allowed to use a calculator, do that. That's fine. I'm not going to multiply and divide every single number anymore because we've done so much long division and multiplication. I'm, I have to make some assumptions and know that you have practiced and mastered that uh, by this point. So sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't, but certainly when you do it on your paper, you'll need to actually divide these numbers out either by hand or using a calculator. So solve all of these yourself. We have one more lesson, part two, for finding the area of any general shape triangle.